Every plant not planted by God will be rooted up. Well, a few people don't need to be preached to very much. They're already amening. I haven't even hardly started. That's not soothing to the ear. That's not nice for me to come to church to learn. That every plant not planted by God will be rooted up? You bet. Don't make me say it again. But you might be quick to say, that's you, preacher, hammering a rock, not God. Oh, but it is. Jesus answered, every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. So the hammers just dropped twice. Right off the bat, you might be thinking, well, there's nothing all that harsh in hearing that. I pull up my plants in my garden all the time. But hang on. Jesus, as we want to often do, or he was often want to do, is using the world of agriculture to make a spiritual lesson about the kingdom of heaven. And that's what he's doing here. He's not just talking about plants, but using plants and planting as a lesson. The context is Jesus replying to disciples. You can look at the verses before and after if you wish. The context is Jesus' reply to people, his disciples actually, who are concerned that what he's been saying, look if you want to see what, what, he, what had he been saying, that the things that he's saying are offending the Pharisees. The, the Pharisees are a denomination, a denominational sect of the Jews of Jesus' day. You can see verse 12 if you need proof of that. So he in a sense is saying, and now I'm putting it back in my own words, he in a sense is saying, don't be alarmed, don't be bothered by the displeasure of those folks in me saying what I've said in opposition to their teaching. And the system which they support is ungodly, and it's going to be eventually rooted up. It's going to eventually be destroyed. The act of planting something, and then the resulting thing planted, call it a plant, signifies the sect of the Pharisees. The persons themselves, yes, but not just individually, but aggregate or as a collectivity, their group think. The persons themselves, as well as the doctrines which they were teaching in their Jewish religion. This is not new. God has done it before in Jeremiah. I planted you, talking to Hebrews, I planted you a choice vine, holy of pure seed. What has happened? No, that's me. How then have you turned degenerate? and become a wild plant or vine. When Jesus says that they're going to be rooted up, our Lord may be thinking, and this is where we have to try to get in his head and wonder, our Lord may be thinking that they're going to just come to nothing, even in this world eventually. Gamaliel, a Jewish teacher later we read about in Acts chapter 5, says the following, Keep away from these men, meaning the apostles. Keep away from these men. Let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. If it will, uh, but if it is of God, you can't overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. That may be what Jesus meant when he says, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted, let's change it. The Pharisees' denominational sect is eventually going to come to nothing. That may be what he's thinking. But one thing is for certain, it's going to be rooted up at judgment. <laughs> Whether it makes it all the way through their lives or, or history, it's going to be rooted up at judgment like tares and, and weeds in, in the wheat field or the barley field or barley or rye field, whatever grain you like. You remember that story? The field is the world. The good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age. The reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. 
Jesus, my friends, Jesus has built his church. Change wordage. Jesus has planted his church. He has given her its doctrine. He's established its religious practices. It's been firmly planted. And may I add, it's growing. It's growing. The Apostle Paul talks about it. I planted, Apollos watered, but God, he's making things grow. So neither he who plants, that's himself, nor he who waters, that's Apollos. We're nothing really. We're not anything. But God who gives the growth. He who plants, once again himself, he who waters, we're all on the same page. Each will receive his wages according to his labor. We're God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. So whether you talk about, it, build, talk about it as a building of a church or a planting of a plant, either way it'll work. And the hammer comes crashing down all the way to our day and time today. For God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. I was begging on that one. Right? Amen. Right? Right. Just as it was with the Pharisees and the others of Jesus' day, so it is in our day and time centuries later. And I might even say not just centuries later, but all through the centuries to later, to now. Through, the, through time there have been Pharisees. Oh, oh, they go by different names. But the same idea or same problem, changing his church, adding to his church, taking away from his church, making it a plant... That's degenerate. I won't go back on the slide. You remember Jeremiah. God started it right. What did you guys do to it? Turned it into a wild plant or vine. Don't look at me, God could say. I started it off right, but we've made it a plant of our own. A plant that is doomed, going to be eventually rooted up. It's made up of the traditions of men doomed to fail, and rooted up by God in the last day. Jesus alone is the true vine. He's the true plant, if you will. We, individual Christians, are the branches. And boy, do we need to stay attached to him and bearing fruit. Read read more about it in John 15 if you're interested. Jesus later on warned about false Christs. There would be those who come along and basically, whether they say I'm a Christ or not, in essence are. This would include Buddha. Popes. Those claiming vicariously to be Christ. And he warned about false prophets. This would include Muhammad. Joseph Smith. Ellen G. White. Jesus also warned about false teachers which would include Martin Luther, Charles Wesley, and Charles Russell, and Fred Johnson. you know him? I didn't think you would. Who's Fred Johnson? Anyone who comes later. These are all plants which the Heavenly Father has not planted, and they're going to be rooted up. Jesus said in verse 14, the very next verse, he says, leave them alone. Stay away from them. Ignore them. They're blind. And those who follow them are blindly following them too, headed for a demise in a ditch. God had planted the Jewish religion in Moses' day. He had planted the law with its doctrines. He had planted the Hebrew religion But he had not planted Phariseeism. He had not planted the Sadducees. Nor had he planted any of the other sectarian traditions of the elders of the Jewish faith or religion. Well, what did he say again? They're going to be rooted up. It will be tragic not only for the blind leaders, but the blind followers who are walking in their footsteps. So I say again what he said first. Leave them alone. Stay away from them. Ignore them. Don't let it bother you what they take offense at. 
The Pharisees of Jesus' day, by the way, I need to quickly say this because some of you are off track already. The Pharisees of Jesus' day were really good people. They were people very devoutly following God the best they, I assume, the best they knew how. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're doing their best. They had not abandoned God totally. They had not altogether left Judaism and started a new religion. What they had done was recreate it to their thinking, recreated it to their pleasure. And the same is true of all 1,000 denominations of men today. It's just a matter of degrees. You may find good, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it, I can find good in every single one. Name No, don't do it now out loud. Afterwards, name one and I'll tell you what I like about them. Every single one of them, with no exception. Unless I don't know who you're talking about. Tell me a denomination, I'm going to tell you I love what they do. This, that, and the other. But this good in them does not excuse it being a planted by men. Let me give you just one example. Martin Luther, when he was trying to reform his church, which was the Catholic church, when he tried to change it, one of the things he told his followers, don't call yourselves Lutherans. Basically, don't plant another church. We just need to fix our congregation or church. But his followers blindly went on and did it anyway. A lot of good Lutherans, some of you may have at one time, maybe you still are in the Lutheran church if you're visiting. I'm just using that as an example to say, hey, lots and lots and lots of good things could be said about every single one. does not change the fact it was a man-planted church. You know what it reminds me of? Counterfeit money. These are counterfeit churches. Many times we can look at counterfeit money and... For us who are not trained, we see no difference. Here's a dollar, here's a dollar. Which one's the fake? Which one's the counterfeit? I don't know. They look just alike. But then you take it to a bank or someone who's an expert. <laughs> My point is, on the surface, they all look fine. They look good. There are counterfeit churches out there, counterfeit plans of salvation, counterfeit gospels, and just like counterfeit money, they may look good, they may be almost indistinguishable from the real thing, but they're fake. Yes, sir. They are a fraud. They are going to be rooted up. There's one faith. I'm not going to wait. Amen. Amen. There's one baptism, Amen. one church. Amen. Ephesians 4. Not in America. There's hundreds and thousands of baptisms. What faith are you? Right there the question is spoken as if there's more than one. What church? That's body. One body? I didn't mention that one, did I? I didn't. What, oh, I said one church. Church and body, same thing. How many churches? One. How many baptisms? One. How many faiths? One. Ask anybody in Appleton that question and you're not going to get the answer. One. We need to be certain that we're in the... Right one. <laughs> we need to make sure that we're not in man's version of one. <laughs> Christianity of our delight. Listen, listen, this, I'm almost done. Christianity of our own delight is a withering flower of man's empty mind doomed to die along with any who are in love with it. As Jesus said, leave them alone. They are blind leaders, blind followers, headed for destruction. Put it in our own wordage, it's a sinking ship. What do you ought to do when you're on a sinking ship? Jump ship. <laughs> Get off it. Don't go down with the ship. Okay, that's hammer time. <laughs>